Hey folks, I am so excited to be chatting to Katie Kremitzos. I have not met her in person, but I've watched her from afar. And of course, I've met her husband, Chris, with uh, PodFast. And I am so happy to talk to you. And it's funny because I was going to pick your brain about, you know, monetizing and really technical stuff. But as I was kind of getting to know you a little bit more, I really want to lean into, you know, as another woman in podcasting, having kids and family and growing a business and just kind of tap into your story. Um, So welcome to the show. Thank you, Lindsay. I'm so happy to be here. And it's a shame that we have not met in person yet. Hopefully that'll happen soon. (laughs) (laughs) It's a crime. I know. And unfortunately, I know PodFast is coming up shortly. Um, Unfortunately, I was unable to go, but the next one, I will be there, darn it. (laughs) Gotta be there. Gotta be there. I know. I love PodFam. So let's talk about you. So I noticed throughout your journey that your podcasts, your business ventures, they have all been driven by passion and that you even took like women's studies in university. And I just love how that vein and that passion has pulled through your whole entrepreneurial journey. Was that like intentional or was it like naturally organic? I think it's just who I am in that, um, you know, passion without clarity is nothing really. It's just like a fun feeling. (laughs) Um, and passion without clarity and definitely without action doesn't Mm -hmm. amount to anything. And so I I was taught as a kid by my parents, just follow and do what you love and everything will work out. And it sounds like such a simple and cliche message, but it has, I feel like I have personified that. So I feel like that has been the driving force and it just, it looks like passion. Really what it is, is this desire for me to live very fully Yeah. to, to really enjoy life and to really, I have a very low tolerance for unhappiness. I'm not willing to stay in things that yeah. are, that, that don't make me happy for very long. I'm definitely not one of those people who would ever stick out a job for, because, you know, I have to make whatever you call it, like the, the things that you need for retirement. That's not me. That's never been me. Yeah. Um. So I think, you know, what has felt like, you know, standing here at 44 and now looking back, I can see the thread connecting it all. But it, it, during parts of that journey, during many parts of that journey, it has felt sort of like this jumping around. Let me try this. Let me try this. Let me try that. Let me try yeah. this. This interests me. Let me follow more of that. This is this is really fascinating. Let me try enacting that and seeing how that feels like this entrepreneurship thing. Like, let me give that a shot and see how it goes. And it's really <laughs> And hard. Um, but I, but there's something in me that still will, will be resilient and get up and do it again, even though it was incredibly yeah. painful yesterday. Same goes with parenthood. Like, you Ooh. know, like just all of the, I think all of those things, the common thread is that I refuse to leave this life with anything left on the table. And mm-hmm. I have no idea when that was ingrained in me. I don't know if it's part of the soul that I was here yeah. born with, or if it's something that my parents did such a great job instilling in us or a combination of all of it. But that some version of that has been alive and well in me my whole life. And so I'm uh, every iteration or every new thing or every, you know, sort of season of evolution that I have is, is that it's me enacting that I, yeah. I want to do this. This is interesting. This sounds fun. This is really amazing. It could be amazing. It's terrifying. And yes. I am, you know, there's my belly is churning thinking about this, but let's do it. Cause why not? I love that. And basically you're saying true to yourself. Yeah. And I love that you said it's scary as hell and you're doing it anyways. I totally live by that motto, but yeah. like, going into podcasting, I, you know, dug my heels in. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, but I did it anyways. Um, and I, sometimes I find like other people looking in, they see you and they're like, Oh, she has it so easy. Look what she's done. Like, but you've had those feelings of it feeling scary or not being sure about what's next. I still have those feelings, you know, like, Um, I, I can look back now and the things that I can laugh at the things that terrified me when I first got into podcasting in 2014, 
um, you know, like breaking down in tears, recording my very first intro for my very first show, my very first podcast ever. Like that took me hours to record a 30 second intro because I was in tears with so much gunk coming up of like, yeah. I'm not good enough for this. I don't want, I don't like my voice. Did it? Yeah. So I can laugh at that now. And I have just a, I have those fears and those, um, the feelings of overwhelm and the feelings of like, ah, oh, like who am I to do this? They still come up mm -hmm. for the future visions that I have. Yeah. But I, I feel like I, because of the muscle that I have worked all of these years and even before podcasting, the muscle I have worked to show up even when it's hard, even when it's painful, even when I may not want to show up, but I know I need to. Yeah. I've worked that muscle a lot. So I'm, I can still show up with that fear here and, and be willing to walk through it and be willing to say like, what's the worst that can happen? I know. Actually, actually, let me go there. What is the worst that can happen? And it, when I really get realistic about that, is that really that bad? No. <laughs> is, it, is it really that bad? No. That's actually a really powerful tool that I use in those moments of like, yeah, instead of being really vague about, you know, all the fear, let me get very, very specific about what am I so scared of and what does it actually look like if it all does come true? And, and most of the time, it's actually not that bad or it's something that I could figure out and deal with, you know? Agreed 100%. And it's like, and I love hearing like on a quick tangent, it's like you hear people that are like, oh my God, they're so successful, but you don't hear like they were bankrupt or like this business model oh. didn't go well. Or like, you know, I had a podcast four years ago and it wasn't that great. <laughs> it's like Girl. you evolve. Girl, we have, oh my God, my husband and I kindly refer to these as our, uh, as to our prior years. When I first met him, um, it was within months after meeting him and, you know, like he and I are soulmates. And so like, it was like Aww. the first time we met and there, and then five months later, the first time we officially like made it official, um, I knew we were going to be together forever. So there, there wasn't like this normal span of like, okay, yeah. we got to wait a year until we move. No, he moved in like the next day, you know, and it took me, it was three months into our relationship that I quit my job to oh gosh. yeah to like be like I'm gonna be an entrepreneur and he had a business at the time I was sort of doing something separate on the side I'd written a book and I was trying to market that but I really actually just went into his business and I was like okay let's make this work we can yeah. do this together and that was terrifying so there were a few years there that we kindly now refer to as our peanut butter and jelly years those are pre-kids yes you know we it, the business was barely staying open it absolutely wasn't paying us and we were living off my savings and you know racking up credit cards and yep yeah i mean i've had those times and then fast forward through you know the the throughout the journey of the women's meditation network um, we've taken out, I want to say two, we we've done two re, uh, refis of our house within the past five or six years or whatever it is very specifically and strategically so that we could use that money to fund the company because the company was, you know, in the red, like there, we were yeah. putting more money into the company than it was making. Um, so maybe it was only one refi at the time, but there was another one earlier on, like basically yeah. like we have been there where it's like. And we're both entrepreneurs. So that's yeah. a whole different story, right? There's nobody making like, you know, doesn't have like the corporate quote unquote, quote, a very yeah. heavy, heavy quotes, stable job. <laughs> so we're very strategically going and, and doing these things. And it's not, you know, it, it's real. I'm not, I'm obviously comfortable with it. Like this is the level of yeah. risk I'm willing to take to live a life yes. and to bet on myself and to bet on this dream that I have and these dreams that we have as a family. And that's, that's the stuff people don't see, you no. know, like, yeah, let me stand up here and tell you yeah. about all these great numbers. And that's awesome. And let me share with you all the stuff that it has taken, not only financially, but emotionally, oh. you know, time-wise, all this stuff. And then in being order. in a relationship together in the business, like my husband it. is in the business too. Like I totally get it. <laughs> yeah. There's so many dynamics, but yes. my point in saying that is really is coming home to your point, yeah. which is it's, you know, please don't get this mixed up for, you know, this is what quote unquote perfect success looks yeah. like, because there's Thank always you. stories behind that picture, always. Wholeheartedly. And I think the lesson there is resilience, knowing your passion and what's right for you. 
And then also just that stick to itiveness, right? Like, no, I believe in this. I know it's going to work. I just need to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. The, it really, and sticking to like, what's right for me. And this goes back to the whole, like staying true to myself, mm-hmm. you know, the women's meditation network could have been profitable right away. If I had chosen <laughs> to do high level coaching, to do some high level, like meditation retreats and do these very like high, high price, high ticket item, yep. little amount of people, but I have, you know, I could absolutely do those. That was my whole business model beforehand. That's what I did with Biz Women Rock. But I I absolutely did not want to do that. Yes. That is not the business model that I wanted to do. So it in order to to really be profitable with the kind of business model that I chose for this business, I said no to a lot of those things. And I remember mm. very, you know, one of my uh, fellow podcasting friends, um, my one of my biz buddies told me one time she was, you know, kind of back and forth with me on WhatsApp and I'm in one of these moments of like, oh, you know, I'm still like, I'm not bringing in the revenue I need to for this business. And she goes, and I'm telling her I'm contemplating, I, maybe I should just put this, you know, meditation challenge together or whatever programs I need to put together. And she's like, Mm. you can absolutely do that. And I will support whatever you do. But I just want to say this, you already know that game. You've done it very well and you can absolutely make money tomorrow doing it but I'm pretty sure that's not what you want to do for this business. That's not how you intended this business to run. So if you can bypass that, if you feel like you need to do it, great. But if you can bypass that and really get aligned with the kind of business model um, and the things that need to be done in order to really live into this business model, you'll get there a lot faster, you know? Yeah. And I've seen this with so many other people's journey, my own, where it's like, you sort of feel like, even as an entrepreneur, as a podcaster, that you need to be like this person and do it that way Uh, to succeed versus following your own path and what feels good for you. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm actually going to be giving a keynote at PodFest. By the time you guys hear this, um, PodFest will have happened a Mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. Um, and I'm incredibly privileged to, to come on stage as a keynote. And my talk is literally called the road less traveled because it is about, Hey, like stop looking around. Yeah. You have everything you need within you and it might be very scary. It might feel completely off, off the road of what others say should be successful. Do you know how many people told me when I went from biz women rock, which was, you know, a podcast that got about 5,000 downloads a month, supported a very healthy coaching business. Basically I did Mm. masterminds, coaching programs, memberships, courses, that whole thing. And when I transitioned to Women's Meditation Network, I had some very reputable, very high quality, beautiful individuals tell me, you are crazy. What are you doing? This is absolutely the wrong thing to do. And they did it very lovingly. Like, how could you do that? Yeah. Um, because that the, I completely broke off to a different direction. I didn't go, I didn't, I didn't continue the script that seemed like the appropriate script for, for what people, podcasters like me do. Yes. And so I have a nice little chuckle to myself. And thankfully, most of them are, are all of them are very beautiful they mean and well. humble. <laughs> and still we'll joke about it. Like, remember that time that you, you know, that I told you that you, you this is a horrible yeah, yeah. idea and here you are, and you've totally bypassed mm-hmm. me and, and, um, and, and we have a chuckle about it and it's great. And, and not that that drives me by any stretch of the imagination, no. but it's this nice little like confirmation. Yeah, I yeah. was right. I was uh, me, my heart, my soul, yes. my vision. Like I was right. And I am the only one who actually knows my husband and I, Chris work very, um, very closely within my company. He's my director of marketing and growth. And, um, and, and there are times that he wants to do things. Now, this is my husband, the closest person to me in my world. Totally close in business too. And there are times where I say, no, that's not what I want. That's not where this business, where I want to yeah. take this business. It doesn't happen often, but there are times for that. So all of that is, is to the point of like being able to really get in tune with yourself so that you are creating this podcast for exactly what you want it to be. And it doesn't need to look like anybody else. No. That's the beauty of podcasting. It can be whatever the hell you want it to be. Yeah. Um, now I, I heard you tell a story in an interview and it resonated with me because I feel the same way. Other entrepreneurs probably feel the same way. It's like 
getting that support and like going to family members and like, you know, these are my business aspirations or these are my plans and here's what I'm doing. And they're like, what? Cause they just don't freaking get it. <laughs> and, how, and, and how could they, right? I like, know, how could they? but it is so deflating. Right. And it's like, you need to have those right people around you that propel you forward. So how did you, cause that helps keep your passion and your motivation going. Like how did you get that, those people around you? Like, who did you go to for support? Always my husband, number one. Yeah. He's always, always, always been my biggest cheerleader, supporter, idea generator. Like he's, he's always the one saying yes, yes. Because he and I have that same value where we're not willing to, no, we're not willing to live unhappily at all or slash or for very long. Right. We're just not. So, um, so he's just always been a, the biggest piece of that puzzle, but literally because of the PodFest community, like, mm -hmm. it, so my husband, Chris Kremitzos is the founder of PodFest. It's one of the the greatest uh, podcasting conferences in the whole world. It's really beautiful. Get, it gathers all the independent podcasters like myself, like Lindsay. And, um, and so, you know, through those meetings and through those events, I have come to be really great friends with fellow podcasters who get yeah. this journey. And it's not just podcasters, entrepreneurs as well. Like yeah. just whether they podcast space. or not, like there's, there's a, a kind of an entrepreneurial mindset that happens. And so of like, you know, we're living outside the box. I mean, all of us are living outside the box. True, true. So it has been vital for me to have that support and to be able to, you know, call up a fellow podcaster, mm -hmm. call up a fellow entrepreneur and just be like, okay, what are you doing about this? What, you know, like, like to normalize it and to yeah. make sure that it, cause it's not so much me bucking the system and that's what I need support for. It's me bettering myself as yes. a podcaster, as an entrepreneur. So how can fellow entrepreneurs and podcasters help me do that better? Like, you know, one, uh, one friend in particular I'm thinking of, um, you know, is she's not a podcaster, but she has a very, probably like a five to $6 million marketing, uh, agency that she's had for years now. She's 10 years younger than me. Um, and we've just become friends this whole time. And we still meet probably once or twice a year for lunch, just to like, when I was hiring my very first employee, which I did early, uh, last year, I got together with her because she had, at, you know, her biggest, she had like 30, 40 employees. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Clearly you got it dialed in. <laughs> got it down. Here's all the thoughts I have about it and everything that my business needs. What do you think? And she ended up giving me just the most on point advice that made hiring who ended up to be my sister. Oh, wow. The, the easiest thing in the world and yeah. so natural and so easy. So uh, for me, it's, it's less about support and it's more about surrounding myself with like minds who, um, I don't need validation of the lifestyle that I live, but it feels mm. really good for other people to, to, um, who are doing that too. And we can sort of collaborate and, yeah. you know, have creativity around that. And it makes it, it makes me feel more normalized in that arena yeah. versus going to my family. My family is incredibly loving, yeah. beautiful. My brother is the only other one who's ever sort of owned his own business. He he doesn't anymore, but he had a, a, a season where he did. And so he and I can sort of, I, you know, cut, we talk about that, but like no one else gets it. And so wow. I just need to know, like, there's no way they can. My sister who started working for me last year, she was like, I could never understand what you did until I got into your business and into the mm. nitty gritty. And so it, so there was a lot of letting go that, that I did actually, when she came out of like, of course, no one gets this. Of course, no, no, no regular sane person who has a nine to five would understand at all. Katie, what are you doing? How do you make money? And what are you, do what yeah, are you yeah. doing? What are you what doing over there? What you make on a day-to-day -day basis? And <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah. What are you doing? But, you know, so for me, it's, it's, it's less of, I don't allow that to create uh, any negativity or oh, any no. space. But it's just this knowing like, hey, this is not really where I'm going to go to to get no. that kind of support. <laughs> they love me and they will cheer me on. Yeah. And they are my ride or die folks, you know, my family. But um, but I have to go elsewhere in order to get fed in that arena. True, because we all want to feel understood. Right. And, and so I again, talking to other entrepreneurs and even honestly doing podcasts like guesting or hosting and talking to other people, it's like in the before chat and after chat, it's like, you just feel heard and understood and like 
oh, what are you doing? Oh, that's a new idea. Tell me more about it. And just kind of like getting little understanding people's experiences and getting like little nuggets. I love it. And for anyone out there, PodFast, what I love about it most is that it's a community where there's absolutely no judgment. It's like everyone just wants to help each other out. It's not like, oh, I've got 5,000 downloads. You don't, man. Like there's none of that. And no no one's like competitors. It's like, I just love that feeling where there's, we're all just there to help each other out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so really, good. it's very special. I know you're probably thinking like that. There's no way there's a place like that. There is. And there uh, is. My, hu- my husband's gift is creating those communities and, um, and he's, he does a very great job yeah, at it. It is amazing. Now you of course had, um, biz women rock, um, for a number of years. Um, what made you want to move out of that and then into your women's network? I mean, I'm sure there was like a lapse in between, but what kind of spawned that? No, there was no lapse in between. Oh, okay. And it's an incredible non sequitur, right? Like who goes from, you know, yeah, yeah. Women, women entrepreneurs podcast to like meditation. Come on. Um, <laughs> the brief story is this at the beginning of 2018, I was doing my business plan for the year. Um, I had just hit like my first six figure year. It was great. I was, I had a very solid plan to launch a few programs that would take me to, you know, probably like 300,000 in revenue. Um, and I was super excited. So I spent, you know, uh, went away on like a CEO retreat, got real clear about that plan. And one of the ideas I had on that retreat, I was sort of thinking about how I could branch out the podcast. And one of the ideas that I had was creating a meditation podcast for women. Came home, told Hubs about it, and he did what he does best is he knows the the landscape of podcasting. And so we're doing research yeah. and um, I'm I am baffled as he is that this doesn't exist. Like in 2018, if you look at medi- if you look at meditation and women, one podcast came up what? and I was like, I can't believe this is open. Like that's- I would never have thought of that in a million years. So we both got, we both sort of had this like, wow, that's really interesting. And that's really exciting. I continued to do nothing with it because it was like this outlier uh, in my business plan. 2018 continues. It's April. I am on my way there to, you know, like I'm on plan to like increase revenue. I'm so excited. I'm loving Biz Women Rock. I'm loving the season I'm in it. In, yeah. in it. And I find out I'm pregnant. And just like that, I don't want to do it anymore. Like I have that, I have that loud whisper in my ear. Interesting. Done. I'm done. I don't want this business, which was terrifying because that was everything that I knew. It was successful. It was feeding our household. You finally got to that point. You know what I mean? You work up towards it. That's what I felt. And then you're like, no. (laughs) So girl, don't, don't you think that like all of the thoughts, like, am I sabotaging myself? Like, like all of these things, like, is this really right? So for the next couple of months, I uh, probably for about two months, I decided at least that I would not make a decision, that I would just go on walks with my husband. And the only thing that I would do is I would not launch the next two things that I was about to do. I actually had literally just put a down payment at a venue here in Tampa for a live event I was about to do. And I it was like 500 bucks. I remember that. <laughs> Then they never returned to me. And I put down this down payment and found out I was pregnant. And then I was like, what? okay, I'm just pausing yeah. any, everything. I'm just going to pause because I don't know how I feel about anything. Mm. And so every day I would go on walks with my husband. One day I would say like, I can do this. I'm superwoman. I'm still going to grow past this and everything's great. And the next day I'd be like, screw this. I'm giving it all up. I'm going to be stay at home mom and roller I'll figure coaster, stuff right? out. Yeah, totally roller coaster. One day couple of weeks into that, I have vomited, you know, my daily ups and downs to my <laughs> husband. And he just sort of like, we, it's silent after a while. And we sit there in the silence and he turns to me, says, what about that meditation idea? And I'm like, well, what about it? And he's like, what about it? And that was all I needed. And like, it was Dang. the seed for us to now brainstorm about like, what could this thing be? Yeah. And, and very quickly, it occurred to me and it, and these were a couple of those guiding things that continue actually to pull me through is one that it it could be the next evolution of my work with women in the world. So before I was really working with women entrepreneurs, it was a very specific niche. Now I could do actually the opposite of any business advice. I could actually cast a wider net and not niche down. And I could really go and reach more and more women. I could 
and I could speak to them in their psyche as they in the, yeah. in their consciousness as they were listening to me. It could be so intimate and beautiful. So I knew that. And then I knew that it could give me the opportunity to build a very different business model, which scared the piss out of me because it was a business model that required big numbers because I didn't want to show up for one-on-one -on -one programs. Right. I didn't want to show up for clients. I didn't want to have anything that, that, that would stray me from time freedom, which was what I really wanted. Especially um, with the young with, kids. Exactly. Like I knew I was about to have a baby and a toddler. Like I need to not be, I need to have it be okay. I don't show up for meetings. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so uh, those are the two things that I knew. And, and, you know, I knew right away that it was going to be a network because they were, I, I mean, the niche was open. I was like, there's oh, way yeah. too many sub niches here that would really click. So I sort of brain dumped on all these uh, different show ideas. And then I started the very first one. I was like, let me just start with the first one. And it's worth mentioning that I had zero history doing guided meditations for people. Like I basically was a meditator. Like yeah. I had practiced meditation since I was 19 years old, but it's not like I like got my degree anywhere, went to yeah. school on any particular type of meditation. So I just, I, I'm a writer. So I just wrote, I wrote these messages I wanted to say to women. Nice. You are phenomenal. You are beautiful. You have everything in you that you need. Like these very affirmative, like, let me remind you, you yeah. are okay. Kind of, kind of messages. And so I would just write those. I would show up to the mic incredibly, <laughs> um, trepidatious, like very much like who the hell am I to lead this meditation right now? Right. But if I could do it in my, the privacy of my closet and no one's looking at me and I can just read the words, like I'll be okay. And Even that's how it started. That's how it started with one podcast meditation for women. Um, I was still, so for like a year and a half that, that one podcast existed, I focused on growing it, but I was paring down my other business. Mm -hmm. I, I still, so in like it for a year and a half, I had two businesses, two oh babies. What the hell? Right. Like it was like, oh. so, um, but I, so there was, there was a really smooth transition period. I eventually said goodbye to Biz Women Rock. Eventually was able to go full force in, yeah. um, you know, the Women's Meditation Network. And fast forward, I now have 10 podcasts that are it's part of insane. that network. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. Um, and I do have to say your voice in the meditations is like so soothing, Thank but like you. rich and yeah. solid. It's like, you are built for that lady. Oh, thank <laughs> you. That was, that's taken practice. That is not something that came naturally to me. Thankfully yeah. I'd had all those years of podcasting to yeah, make yeah. me not, like I was already used to my voice on the mic, but this was a different voice. I was like, oh God, that is weird <laughs> to hear me sound like that. <laughs> Feels unnatural. <laughs> I know, I know. So what did you learn in Biz Women Rock and that podcast that you brought into um, the new one? Like, were there things that you oh, should have done that earlier or that I now know I don't want to do this and do want to do this? Yeah, the more more on the technical side, I learned... I I learned how to do a program schedule. I already knew how, you know, to, um, I already knew, you know, the, the hosting, I knew all the tools, yeah. like I knew all that stuff that it was like anyone brand new coming in would have a big learning curve. I didn't have any of that, but more importantly, massively important. I learned to let go of what I thought it should be and instead Ooh, yes. create something that was actually what I wanted it to be. Biz Women in Rock was my first attempt at business on my own, really, like in a real big way. Mm -hmm. And so there was a lot of that business could have been a lot bigger. However, the reason that it just sort of grew to where it was and it was sort of stable there was because there was a lot of internal you know, we all know entrepreneurship is so much about personal development and like oh, who yeah. you are as a person. And that was probably my, one of my biggest personal development courses. Like it, so much of like, who am I to even, like, it took me a long time to even offer coaching. Cause I didn't think I was a oh, coach. Really? I, who, who am I? People were begging me like, Oh, can I coach with you? Can you help me with my business? I'm like, I'm just interviewing other CEOs. I mean, I, I was in, I hadn't a business at the time with my husband. So it's not yeah. like I was ignorant, but it, so those lessons of stepping into my worth as a business owner, um, I learned them. I mean, I absolutely learned them. And, you know, this idea of like being so worried about uh, and concerned with comparison, like who am I compared? How come I'm not as big as that, as that one? And 
what am I doing wrong? And they're doing this right. And it's so infuriating and they're making, you know, seven figures already. And what's yeah. wrong with me that I'm like tr trying to like, you know, hit the nut every single month. Like it's brutal. Oh my that noise was very loud in that business. And that was more of me needing to do some growing up and needing to, to, um, kind of deconstruct all of that yuckiness, which I think has, I do believe that there was a point to it. Like I needed to learn those things. I needed to be able to shed that off. And that was one thing I noticed right away in women's meditation network. I immediately, because I, like, I had no fear. In Biz Women Rock, there was always a fear. There was always like a not good enough fear. I'm not going to like, am I going to make it kind of a fear? Are people going to recognize this for what I feel like it should be recognized for? Yeah. In Women's Meditation Network, there was no fear there. There was like, Interesting. I mean, despite the who am I to do this? Like those yeah. were definitely thoughts that came up, but those were minor in comparison to this deep knowing this is exactly where I need to be. This is exactly what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. So felt right. up Katie and do it, even though it's going to, you're going to have to figure it out yeah. along the way. Right. And, and in that there, like all of the practices of this comparison game that I had done in the prior business dissolved. I don't have any of that. It has Amazing. never existed in this business. I don't compare. I am aware of people in my space. I, I use that to educate myself about how I could do things differently, uniquely, um, mm -hmm. really stand out as a, as a brand. Um, and oftentimes collaborate. I'm very collaborative with other yeah, people in this fabulous. space. But that competition does not exist for me. So that's what Biz Women Rock did is it it really was a personal development opportunity for me to, to step into my own as a very worthy and powerful mm -hmm. podcaster, entrepreneur, woman, and just somebody who unapologetically is, is creating this journey. Isn't it funny, like when you look back and you see like where you were, what you've gone through. And like that voice telling you when you didn't feel that imposter syndrome so much, or you felt like it was right. It's just like that inner knowing of like, this is who I am. This is what I believe in. This is my passion. This is my truth. I am just stepping into it and it just feels natural. Yes. And let me not, you know, misrepresent that. It's a painful in process. <laughs> Excuse oh me, like, yeah. <laughs> it's pain. Like, that that quiet time of me, you know, trying to figure out what am I uh, doing with Biz Women Rock and what is it like? I, yeah. I remember that being excruciating time. It felt like a year, even though I look back I and I was like, that well was like fathom. six weeks. So and and even like throughout this season of Women's Meditation Network, I, I feel like there are very painful moments that force me to go inside and uncover and unlayer mm. and figure out like what is right for me. Um, so the, the journey of, of that, of stepping into that is, is I think mostly painful, Yeah, but always worthwhile, always worthwhile. I know it's almost like, and I've gone through it myself and weirdly enough, I'm going through it right now. So everything we're talking about, I'm like, damn, yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I'm mm -hmm. feeling you. Cause mm -hmm. I, when you like step up or transform or change and shed what's not right for you and step into what is right for you, like it's ugly. <laughs> it's so ugly and it's so painful and it's okay that it's ugly. Like it, you know, I guess that's one thing I really want to say in that I, when I, it, somebody told me one time, like share your story from a scar, not a wound. Meaning Ooh. when you're in the, when you're in the middle of going through something, it's probably not the ideal time to like share and expose. It's okay. If you do like, I'm not condemning you. Yeah. You yeah. For me, that has never felt okay. So you will see like it, social media is actually a really great representation of this. Like it, um, during that particular transition time, I was not posting a lot on social media rarely because I was so concerned with what's going on inward. And I was so yeah. uncertain of it that why I couldn't share authentically. I couldn't tell you like, it's a great day. And inside I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Today? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, um, and I say that because we, we all have those times and it's Absolutely. okay for us to like fall apart. And, you know, there's the saying of like, you have to break down in order to have the breakthrough. So yeah. I just really believe that. And I feel like they're, 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 you have to have those times. You can't know yourself. You can't direct your life. You can't create this podcasting path 
without those dark times or still times or quiet times, you just can't, you can't always be on the run because, because then you don't know if you can't recalibrate that way. You have to slow down. You have to be still, yeah. you have to sometimes go through a really dark time in order to recalibrate and make sure you're on the right path. I know. And sometimes you need to have like those lessons and it needs to hit you on the head five times a thousand before times. you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Until you're like, okay, I hear you voice. <laughs> I'll, I'll take your uh, advice and move on or whatever. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I just, again, I've so much enjoyed talking to you and hearing your journey. I know it's helped me kind of deal with my own story that I'm dealing with right now. Yeah. And uh, maybe I'll share my story in six months or so, but we all have it, whether you're a podcaster yeah. or an entrepreneur and just, yeah, listening to your heart. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. And so let's, before we go share, because we obviously want to impact more women whether they're podcasting, living their lives and parenting, um, where they can find those amazing meditations. Um, side note, I love the one about, uh, if you're in a bad mood, <laughs> I just thought that was awesome. I'm like, that's so real. It's not I know. All the, you know, hoity toity <laughs> stuff. It's like, yeah, I'm in a yeah. bad mood today and I need to yeah. get over it. I need help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you for commenting on that. I'm very, uh, I'm very mindful of that. I want to make these meditations very approachable very. and not sort of chuck with meditation speak. Not that that's bad, but like, mm -hmm. I want to make it like that. Like, Accessible. oh, I'm scrolling, I'm throwing, I'm scrolling through the list of, oh, yep. That's what that one's me. Like, this is how I'm feeling, or this is how I want to feel. Right. Like that's yeah. really how I construct those titles in the entire meditation. So I'm, I'm so glad that you got that. I know. That oh, and that awesome. that's translating. It so is. Yeah. So share what your selections are and how people yeah. can find it. And then I believe you've got a wicked promotion right now too, actually. Yeah. yeah. So if you go to whatever podcast player you're listening to now, go type in meditation for women. All of my 10 podcasts should show up. Um, and just go subscribe and listen to any single one of them. So you have meditation for women. It's, it's mm -hmm. the original. It has a little bit of everything. Um, I'll give you just some examples, sleep meditation for women, yes. morning meditation for women, daily affirmations. Most recent ones are meditation for anxiety, um, healing meditation. We have a whole sounds, you know, catalog of like sleep sounds, water, yeah. nature sounds, ambient sounds. So there's a lot there for you to choose from, um, according to whatever season of life you're in or whatever, you know, kind of thing you need. Um, and you can also go to women's meditation network.com and get access to all of that too. So yes, we are doing a big fun new year's promotion right now. So I know we're in February, but all throughout January and February, we are running a new year's promotion. And it's basically an excuse for me to like give awesome gifts to all of my people nice. listening. Um, so what we're doing is we're giving away 10 different gift baskets full of over like $300 each of some of our favorite health and wellness products, uh, mm. athletic greens, um, uh, just thrive probiotics. I mean, uh, energy bits, like all sorts of really great, uh, stuff. And so each gift baskets, uh, like, again, like worth over 300 bucks. So we're giving away totally. 10 of those. All you have to do to enter is do three things. Number one, go subscribe to any one of those podcasts that I just spoke about. Um, number two, go to Apple Podcasts. Go give me a, an honest rating and review. Let me know what you liked, what your favorite episode was, whatever it was, you, whatever it is you want to tell me, um, because that always helps more people find our show. Absolutely. Um, and then thirdly, just take a screenshot of that review. Go to Instagram or Facebook, tag Women's Meditation Network, and you're automatically entered. And we'll be um, gathering entries all throughout January and February. Sweet. That's awesome. Who doesn't want yeah. all those goodies? Yeah, that's and super easy, And listen to your right? show in the process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go get I some know. calm and some, you know, nice swag. So, uh, yeah. Seriously. I will be now listening to your morning one to kind of like clear my head and get yeah. me started in the right path. I know. I feel like I need the guided meditations. I cannot stop my brain. So I need to be talked through it. You know what it's, I mean? I'm I the could same never way. do it on my own. Yeah, I, 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 I go back and forth, um, but I do a lot of guided meditations for that same reason. And I and mostly because what really um, hits with me is I love listening to like poetic words, meaning yeah. like, like, we're, I definitely have like the relax your body, you know, head to toe kind of stuff. That's very, you know, I think very basic, but powerful. But um, I write these 
meditations very poetically with like this this deep meaning behind the poems, right? I have one mo more recently called Clear Blue Skies on uh, meditation for women. And, you know, just if you listen to the poetry, it's like connecting you to like, those those universal things like the yeah. stresses I'm feeling the the speed I feel like I'm at but if you just like calm down take a deep breath you'll see the clear blue skies like yeah so for me like that is what really hits me during those guided meditations I, like I want that I love it that deep sense of like ah like yes you know kind of yeah. like I'm listening to my favorite song lyrics like oh, yeah like so the beauty fulfilling. of it but also yeah. it's like different layers I know exactly. you're so, so creative yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. But I hope that you and everyone listening really enjoy that. So. Yeah, I absolutely will. I so appreciate your time and hearing your journey and just getting to know you better. And um, yeah, I hope to see you at the next podcast. <laughs> uh, Lindsay, you were awesome. Thank you so much. All I right. really appreciate you having me here. Thanks.